Russian anti-satellite nuclear weapon could be devastating, Pentagon warns. U.S. intelligence officials started looking into a slate of secret Russian satellite launches in early 2022, later discovering that Russia was developing a weapon that could destroy thousands of satellites in the Earth's atmosphere. That weapon, with potentially devastating nuclear capabilities, could destroy thousands of government and commercial satellites used for a variety of purposes, from mapping to internet and cell phone connection, U.S. officials have warned. A senior Defense Department official told lawmakers that Russia is developing an indiscriminate anti-satellite nuclear device that would pose a threat to all satellites operated by countries and companies around the world. The concept that we are concerned about is Russia is developing and, if we are unable to convince them otherwise, to ultimately fly a nuclear weapon in space, which will be an indiscriminate weapon that would not distinguish among military, civilian or commercial satellites, John Plum, the Assistant Secretary of Defense for Space Policy, said at a House Armed Services subcommittee hearing. According to NBC News, he said the threat was not imminent, but that the Pentagon and the entire Biden administration were concerned about the program. Asked about the potential effect of such a weapon, Plum said low Earth orbit, the most common orbit for satellites, would be rendered unusable for possibly up to a year because of the radiation from a nuclear detonation. It is difficult to estimate the precise impact of such a weapon, depending on the size of a nuclear explosion, Plum said, but he said a rough assessment would suggest satellites that aren't hardened against a nuclear detonation in space, which is most satellites, could be damaged and affected, and some would be caught in an immediate blast. Plum's comments are the first time the Biden administration has discussed the potential Russian anti-satellite capability at an open congressional hearing. Russian officials have claimed that Ukraine attacked Crimea Peninsula with U.S.-made Army tactical missile systems, ATAGMS, overnight on Monday in an attempt to knock out Kremlin's defense capabilities. Kremlin claimed that six ATAGMS were shot down over the Russian annexed Crimea Peninsula. Sergei Aksionov, the Russian-backed head of Crimea, said ATAGMS missiles were shot down over the peninsula. The Russian Defense Ministry also reported the downing of six ATAGMS, without specifying the location where they were shot down. Ten Ukrainian unmanned aerial vehicles, six ATAGMS tactical missiles manufactured by the United States and two guided hammer aircraft bombs manufactured by France were shot down by air defenses, the ministry said. Last night, Russian authorities activated air defenses over Dzenkoy and Simferopol as Ukrainian militants conducted a missile strike at the Republic of Crimea, Vladimir Rogov, chairman of the We Are Together with Russia movement, wrote on Telegram. He claimed that Ukrainian troops used several Adakhan's ballistic missiles in an attempt to attack civilians on the peninsula. Meanwhile, Russian MP Leonid Ivlev said Ukraine struck at airbases in Crimea with 12 Adakhan's and added that attacks could increase ahead of President Vladimir Putin's inauguration for a new term that is due to place next week. Their target is airfields. The missiles were destroyed by air defenses, Ivlev told RIA news agency. He said Ukraine was seeking to penetrate air defense shield over Crimea and strike at strategically important facilities. Pro-Russian Rybar Telegram channel claimed 30 missiles had been fired at Crimea in recent days. Pentagon revealed last week that President Joe Biden secretly approved the transfer of the long-range Adagans missiles in February for use inside Ukrainian territory. Ukraine upgrades outdated S-200 air defense system shoots down Russian strategic aircraft. To take down a Tu-22 and two A-50s, Ukraine likely used 1960s Soviet-era S-200 air defense missile systems designed to shoot down high-altitude strategic bombers and spy planes. The Kyiv Post media outlet reported this. It is noted that in the last four months, Ukraine has made significant progress in countering the Kremlin's strategic aviation. Unlike previous incidents in which Russian bombers were only damaged or destroyed while on their base airfields, the Ukrainian air defense forces have showcased a new level of expertise by successfully shooting down enemy strategic aircraft directly in the air. In January 2024, the Air Defense Forces of Ukraine destroyed a Russian A-50 
Five-zero-U long-range radar detection aircraft and seriously damaged an IL-22M. The IL-22M is believed to have served as a repeater by the Russians. Unfortunately, the enemy managed to land the plane, which had suffered significant damage to the tail section of the fuselage. On the evening of February the 23rd, another Russian A-50 aircraft was shot down during a combat mission over the Sea of Azov. On the morning of April the 19th, 2024, the Russian Tu-22M3 supersonic strategic bomber carrying KH-22 and KH-32 missiles became the prey of the Ukrainian Air Force and the HUR. Ukraine claims that in all these instances, the dated Soviet S-200 anti-aircraft unit was used. The S-200 is a long-range anti-aircraft missile system developed in the USSR in the 1960s which could hit air targets at up to 160 kilometers in its early versions. During its time, the S-200 system underwent four modernizations, the most famous of which were the S-200V Vega, the S-200M Vega M and the basic version of the S-200 Angara. With each modification, missile and guidance were improved, increasing the accuracy of the system. The technical specifications of the upgraded S-200 missile are currently not disclosed. It is presumed that to increase the flight range, the missile's warhead was downsized to accommodate additional rocket fuel. Another possibility is that Ukraine has modernized the guidance system, eliminating the need for target illumination or manual control from the ground. During the final stage of flight, the missile could capture the target in a fully autonomous automatic mode. It's also possible that other countries have contributed to the modernization process by providing modern electronic components for the missile.